It was the most widespread story in all of sports on September 12th, 2023. Football legend and future Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers tore his left Achilles tendon after just 75 seconds of leading the New York Jets on the field. Rodgers' first game with a team other than the Green Bay Packers ended in just four plays when a devastating injury struck. A brutal blow to the hopes of a Jets team that had Super Bowl on its mind. The last time a Jets team was in a similar situation was 1999, where they had genuine buzz to be a Super Bowl contender, and where their quarterback Vinny Testaverde also went down in the first game of the season at home with a torn left Achilles tendon. You just cannot make this up. And to make matters crazier, Guess who was there on the field as an honorary captain for the Jets in the game Rodgers would go down? Vinny Testaverde. Time is a flat circle, and there are plenty of occurrences just like this throughout life, but especially sports. Not gonna rank these or anything, or say that these are the top ones or anything definitive like that, but if you want to be freaked out a little by how things move in mysterious ways in the sports world, this is the video for you. Oh, also, the craziest thing I didn't mention about the Aaron Rodgers one is a company called Underdog Fantasy offered new users a promo where Rodgers just needed to get one yard for the user to succeed, and he got hurt before getting to achieve that. The seemingly gimme. And surely, this is not Underdog's fault because this was a freak, unpredictable event that never happens and is why we're even here. But I mean, what are the chances? You're gonna be saying that to yourself a lot here. Like for example, this video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. You may not have noticed, but it's American football season. Underdog Fantasy offers what's called a pick'em. Pick two to five players, use the projections of their stats, and answer the very simple question, higher or lower. Get all your picks right, and you can get up to 20 times your money. That goes for the NFL and college. Underdog offers in-game pick'em for NFL play, so that the beginning of the game doesn't mean the end of making picks based on projections. New customers will also get a mystery pick'em add-on to their slate for no additional cost. And you know what's really cool? If you don't like football, that's fine. You can make picks for racing, tennis, soccer, women's basketball, or even CSGO. I know, right? Crazy. And you can do all of that at the same time, all together. Underdog Pick'ems are available in 30 US states, so be sure to double check if yours is eligible to participate in their contests. If you sign up between now and October 4th, 2023 using code SRS, you will get a 100% deposit match up to $500. Anytime after that, up to $100. Again, that's underdogfantasy.com, Underdog Fantasy on the App Store, or using the QR code on screen. Thank you very much to Underdog for sponsoring this video. Please play responsibly. Cecil Fielder was a baseball player who would hit bombs. He had 51 home runs in his first ever full season. He was a three-time All-Star, a two-time runner-up for American League MVP, and a man who so eloquently gave the world a definition for the word vibe. Vibe to vibe, like me and you rapping right now, we're vibing. We're, we're you know, getting it, getting it on right here. We're talking to each other, vibing. That's what vibing is. But most importantly for us, he hit 319 home runs for his MLB career. One thing he also did was partake in the act of having a child. His son, Prince, was always around Cecil when he was with the Tigers. Prince managed to hit a home run into the upper deck of Tiger Stadium when he was 12. Needless to say, he had crazy major league potential. Prince had a great career too that also included a 50 home run season, multiple all-star appearances, and top three MVP vote finishes, just like his dad. But a devastating neck injury forced him into retirement when he was just 32 years old, and he had 319 career home runs. Father and son, both finishing similar yet completely separate careers, with the exact same home run total. And the number is 319 and not zero, the way you and your dad both have zero big league home runs. 
The most noteworthy individual rivalry in sports of this era, possibly ever, is Lionel Messi versus Cristiano Ronaldo. Two of the most famous men in the entire world. They are both widely considered candidates for best player of all time in the sport, and the rivalry was fueled through their years of playing for rival Spanish clubs Barcelona and Real Madrid. They also both have extremely loyal, extremely passionate fans who will die on the hill that their preferred player is the best of all time. Ronaldo and Messi are separated in age by 869 days. Ronaldo was born on February 5th, 1985. Messi was born on June 24th, 1987. Watch this though. Cristiano's oldest son was born on June 17th, 2010. Messi's was born on November 2nd, 2012. An age difference of, you guessed it, 869 days. These two have more duality than almost any rivals there have ever been, and yet they have this completely overlapping them. Super Bowl 51 is one of the most notorious games in American sports history. In it, the Atlanta Falcons built up a seemingly insurmountable 28-3 lead against the New England Patriots well into the third quarter of the game. They lost 34-28. It's the most historic and most memed comeback in NFL history. The Falcons quarterback in that game was named Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan was the 2016 NFL MVP and the clear best quarterback in Falcons history. He was better than Michael Vick, but admittedly would not beat Vick in a race. So he's just like Earn from Atlanta. It's Michael Vick. November 18th, 2021 would go down as the last time Matt Ryan would ever play a game against the Patriots as a Falcon. Most of the rosters for both teams were way different, but Ryan was still here. In his home stadium in Atlanta, he had one last chance to cleanse himself of the sins of that game, at least for a moment. The Falcons lost 25 to nothing, the same deficit of points they were winning by in that Super Bowl. But that's not the coincidence here. Not long after the game, the universe gave Matt Ryan a parting shot. That night, of all nights, the longest partial lunar eclipse of the century was going to take place. A moment where the Earth moves between the sun and a full moon. And it lasted for 3 hours and 28 minutes. No words. Michael Jordan is, without question, the greatest player to ever wear a Chicago Bulls uniform, and possibly the very best in all basketball history. He is one of the most accomplished players and winners in NBA history, and I'm sure you already know that. But I am going to cherry pick a couple facts from his career for you, for no particular reason. He was a first round draft pick, he was consistently well over 20 points per game, in his case 30. He, in his career, would lead the entire league in steals while also giving the Chicago Bulls a complete 82-game season and lead the entire league in minutes played per game. That and having a reputation of being a player who would rise to big moments and elevate his teams in the postseason to their highest potential. Well, 27 years after they drafted Jordan in the first round, the Bulls selected Jimmy Butler in the first round. Butler could be argued as a distant heir to Jordan's throne of top young Bulls player. He broke Jordan's team record for points in a single half in 2016, and years later with the Miami Heat became the first player since Jordan to have multiple games of a playoff series with at least 40 points and 4 steals. Butler, in his career, would consistently give the Chicago Bulls 20 points per game seasons, an 82 games played season, led the league in minutes, has a year where he led the league in steals, and is best known as being someone who completely exceeds his baseline great play come playoff time, just like Michael Jordan. So why is this a coincidence? Because if you split the faces of these two former Bulls players with that in common and try to make a symmetrical looking face, this is what you get. This is way more coherent than it should be. It's not even just that, it's everything on a basketball court they've had in common too, on top of this. Two former Bulls players with so much in common, and it is so eerie that you can get to this point, where there are conspiracies claiming Jordan has to be Jimmy's secret father. But one thing is not up for debate. 
The Chicago Bulls found a guy with a symmetrical face to their all-time best player, and he cranked out a career with genuine similarities to it. What are the chances? And of course, I gotta throw some credit over to Mike Korzemba for having this iconic thumbnail. This one is the least like all the others because another human being tried to manifest it, but it was so disconnected from reality that it winds up here. Former Seattle Mariners third baseman Mike Blowers went into broadcasting after his career would end and wound up getting a job in the booth with his former team. Hitting eighth for the Mariners on September 27, 2009 is Matt Tuiasa Sopo. Matt came into this game with just 59 career big league at bats, and most relevant to the story, zero home runs. Blowers, just for fun, fired off a completely random prediction for the Mariners game that day. Tuiasa Sopo today, he swung the bat well the last few times that he's got an opportunity to play. I expect him to hit his first big league home run today. He's going to get a good count today. He's going to get a fastball from talent, and he's going to hit it out of left center field, probably oh, maybe in the second deck. His first home run of his career coming up, according to Mike Blowers. On a 3-1 and count. On a 3-1 count. A breaky yeah. ball, fastball. It'll, fastball. Be, it'll, be a, no, fastball. it'll be a fastball. He's a fastball one. pitcher. He'll 3-1 count. Second at bat. In his second at bat of the day, Tuiasa Sopo worked a three balls, one strike count. There is no evidence out there available to confirm that he knew about Mike Blowers' prediction. This is completely separate from the prediction. The rules of jinxing don't work here. Completely isolated from the broadcaster's booth. Here we go. 3-1 pitch on the way. Swung up! And belted! Oh! He's a <laughs> the second deck! Fly! Fly! Fly away! I don't believe it! He pulled a fastball on a 3-1 count in his second at-bat of the game for his first career home run, just as Mike Blowers said he was going to. Jack Nicklaus has the most major championship wins in golf history with 18. For many years, he was easily the best golfer in the history of the sport, with no one really in his universe. Although in the early 2000s, the only one to ever really challenge him for the throne came along. The man with the second most major wins of all time. You may know his name. Jack Nicholas is 35 years older than Tiger Woods. It is kind of a miracle that they even played in tournaments against one another. Athletes of that age gap usually never go in direct competition with each other. It's like if I, the person narrating this, was to just fight Robert Downey Jr. right now. Like, who am I, Oppenheimer? This one is as much symbolism as it is coincidence, but it's not like either of them schemed to make this possible. There are four major championships. The US Open, PGA Championship, Open Championship, and the Masters. Nicholas played his final US Open and PGA Championship in 2000. Both were won by Tiger Woods. And he'd play his final Open Championship and Masters in 2005. Both were again won by Tiger Woods. Bear in mind, Nicholas hadn't won a major since 1986, and golf isn't a 1v1 kind of sport in these events. It's not like Woods had to directly and only beat Nicholas to win these. He was just doing it anyway, and Nicholas was more or less just along for the ride, at least in this context. Or should I say, he was there to pass the torch. Tiger was going to win all these anyway, and did, independently of Jack being there, because Jack, by that point, didn't pose a threat to Tiger's chances. But golf's all-time goat, going out in his final majors, where the only other golfer, even in his stratosphere, who is 35 years younger than him, was there to win it all. It's kind of crazy. Going 4 for 4 on that crazy overlap in the major championships gets it on this list. Baseball's really long season opens up the most possibilities for freak coincidences. That's why the majority have been and will be baseball-centric in our journey today. It's so long that for the past few decades in MLB, nearly every team without fail has employed what's called a five-man starting rotation. It's exactly what it sounds like. Each team ideally has five primary pitchers to pitch, rotating in order one through five throughout the season. So in the most simplistic and hypothetical terms, each starting pitcher on a team theoretically has a one in five chance to pitch in a given game. So it would definitely be a fun little rarity 
parody if both starting pitchers in a particular game happen to like have the same birthday or something like that, right? Ryan Dempster of the Chicago Cubs and Homer Bailey of the Cincinnati Reds share a birthday and were the two starting pitchers in a game on their birthday. <laughs> May 3rd, 2012. Homer Bailey pitches six innings of three-run ball. Ryan Dempster throws eight shutout innings. Meanwhile, Dempster's team still loses the game thanks to some <laughs> clean and perfectly normal looking baseball from his team after he's taken out of the game. How's this for a segue, by the way? The first batter faced by a Cubs pitcher other than Dempster in that game was Willie Harris. He walked. Willie Harris shares a birthday with former four-time All-Star second baseman Ian Kinsler. Oh yeah, we are not done with birthday coincidences yet. On June 22nd, 2008, it was Willie and Ian's birthday. Willie played for the Washington Nationals. Ian played for the Texas Rangers. In the top of the sixth inning in that game, Ian hit a home run. What a fantastic birthday for him, huh? Well, wouldn't you know, Willie Harris, in the bottom of the sixth, the very same inning, hit a home run too. Baseball is like the weirdest thing our species has ever come up with, and that's why we all love it. Baseball! Oh yeah, I did want to talk about that. We talking about uh, baseball? About baseball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will leave you with what I personally consider to be the best story of the bunch here. Maybe not the biggest coincidence, maybe not the most improbable occurrence, but the most fun one to end on, pitcher Gaylord Perry is in the Hall of Fame for pitching, not hitting. When Perry first came up with the San Francisco Giants in 1962, his manager was a man named Alvin Dark. To put it nicely but bluntly, Alvin Dark didn't think Perry was very good at hitting. An exact quote he said once when watching Perry try to hit a home run in pitcher's batting practice was, there'll be a man on the moon before he hits a home run. Do not forget this. Let's now jump to July 20th, 1969. Perry has had a fantastic career to this point with the Giants. I mean, he's in the Hall of Fame after all, but he still has never hit a home run. Nobody's thinking about that today though, because this was happening. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This is not an invitation to fire off about moon landing conspiracies or whether or not you think it happened in the comment section. Anyone who turns the comment section into a war zone is getting sent to the moon by themselves to be all lonely. You get the Luther from Umbrella Academy treatment. What we can all agree on now is, on that day, the world was under the impression a man stepped on the moon. For all intents and purposes, we're all gonna put ourselves in 1969 headspace. And I have no intention of challenging Buzz Aldrin today for the way he defends that he and the boys stepped on the moon. Here's the timeline. The Giants game begins at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Gaylord Perry is the pitcher. 1.17 p.m., Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong touch down on the moon in their module. Sometime after this, the San Francisco Giants stadium PA announcer told the crowd what was going on. Gaylord Perry even being the pitcher when man was going to the moon after what Alvin Dark said about him is a coincidence in and of itself. Maybe he realized that, maybe he didn't, but not long after. 34 minutes, according to the San Francisco Examiner. 34 minutes. It's the bottom of the third inning. In his first at-bat of the game, Gaylord Perry hit a home run. The first of his career. I'm on the mound in, in Calistic Park in San Francisco, pitching against the Dodgers, and we have a moment of silence. The man had landed on the moon. Bottom of that inning, I hit my first home run. He'd finish 14 years later with six MLB home runs. Technically, Alvin Dark was right. Man reached the moon before Gaylord Perry hit a major league home run. However, if we're being realistic, the timing couldn't have been any better. Alvin Dark wasn't even being serious, probably. I bet you he said that as a joke, just to roast his pitcher's hitting abilities. On the same day, a human being made contact with the moon. The very same day, Gaylord Perry happened to hit a home run a matter of minutes later. Dudes rock. Hey, should we make a video following up on this with more sometime? Sound off in the comments about any coincidences that weren't here, and maybe we'll do more of these. Yeah, uh, this was fun.